Have you ever had the need to query two tables in Microsoft Access where one table has multiple independent relationships to the other table? This is more of a beginner's topic, but if this appeals to you, watch on. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and today I'm talking about a fairly basic query topic in Microsoft Access and that is how to deal with the situation when one table has multiple independent relations to another table. That's a topic that came up a couple of times in recent months in different online Microsoft Access forums and it's a topic that is not so easy to explain in words, but I hope I can make the situation and the solution quite clear in this video. But as we need to look at access to understand the problem and the solution, we switched right over. So, I already prepared a really simple database here with just three tables. The customer table is not really interesting to us, so we look at the orders table here and there are five orders in that table. And the situation I'm going to talk about here today is these columns, entered by, approved by and fulfilled by. And the numbers in these columns are employee IDs. So one employee has entered the order, the same or another employee has approved the order and finally uh, yet another or maybe the same employee has fulfilled the order. So these are three independent relations between the orders table and the employee table. The employee table is Super simple, it just has an employee ID and an employee name. I really created super simple tables for this example. Now, the first fairly easy challenge comes when we look at the relations. So we have our three columns entered by, approved by and fulfilled by. And as I said, the values in these columns are employee IDs. So I drag a link between these tables and I say enforce referential integrity. That's fine for our example. And now I created a link between entered by and employee ID. So, but what about these two columns? We must create links for them as well. So I do the same, I drag approved by to the employee field and now I get a question here, a relationship already exists. Do you want to edit the existing relationships to create a new relationship? Click no. And I want a new relationship because the relationship between entered by and the employee doing that and approved by and the employee and fulfilled by and the employee table, these are all independent relationships. So I click no here and now this dialog pops up. And once I click OK, I move this a bit to the side. Once I click Create here, something will happen in the background. You see, Access added a new table here, which is called employee underscore one. But there is no such table. This is another incarnation of the one employee table we've got in our database. And the same happens if I create a new relationship for the full filled by column, create and once again a new table, a virtual new table was added to our relationship diagram and it's called employee underscore two. And this gives you already a hint 
to the solution of our oncoming problem. As far as the relation model is concerned, we are done here. We created three independent relationships. So now our order table has a referential integrity set up to the employee tables on all three fields. And these are independent relationships. So I close this and save the relations. And now I want to create a query. So just set new query and I drag the orders table here because that is what we are going to query as a primary table. And now I also add the employee table. And here is a bit of a problem you can see. The ever so helpful query designer automatically created three joins between this table. And there's a problem with that because these three joins are somewhat correct, but they must be independent because now we, you will quickly see a problem. I just add a couple of columns here and I also want to see the employee name and I run this query and this is not what we intend to see. We just see one record by chance, I have to say. So let's um, look at the SQL view for a moment. You, you don't necessarily need to understand what's going on here, but it makes the problem pretty clear. So in the SQL, we have the table employee. That's fine. We have an inner join to TBL order, but yet um, it's not working as expected because you see there is one join to um, employee ID to the fulfilled by column. There's another join employee ID to approved by, and there is yet another join criteria, I should rather say, to the entered by column. But these are all linked with the AND keyword. So all three conditions must be met that a record is displayed in the results. And now if we look at the orders table, then it becomes quite clear why one record was actually displayed. This one here, it has the very same employee ID for all three fields. And that is the only situation that the default link created by access for this query works. So I close the table and we go back to the design view of the query. Of course, the same problem could also be addressed in the SQL view, but as this video is directed to beginners, I will keep it simple and use the visual query designer. So what I do, I select, I click on these um, links. Now you see that this one here is slightly bolder. That means it is selected. And then I hit the delete key to remove this, um, to remove this relation. And now I have just one employee table left over here. And now there's something that's technically not really required, but it is helpful to understand what's going on. In the alias column, um, in the alias property of this table, I enter entered by employee. So this is an alias for the table. It is 
The underlying table in the database is TBL employee, but inside this query, I want to name this query entered by employee. And this is also reflected over here in the, um, in the layout of the tables. And this will make it much clearer what the individual tables are. And now comes one thing that access made automatically in the relationship window, but you must do manually when designing a query. I pull the employee table inside the query window again. I again delete some of the um, links between the table. And now for this one, I enter another alias and that is approved by employee. And you see that's once again reflected here in the name in the uh, query window here. And now I do this one more time. And once again, I delete or remove these automatically created links except the one to fulfilled by because that's the one I want to keep and now I enter the alias fulfilled by employee can move that to the side and if you now look down here at the, the column window I now add the employee name from each of the three incarnations of our employee table. And if you look at these, I'm going to disappear for a second so you can see better. And now you see the three different table names down here. And we have employee name because it's the name of the column. We have that in all three columns. But if you look at these uh, representation here, you see that they are drawn from different tables and it makes it much easier to understand why there are three employee tables in this query. And there's one more thing I would need um, to do in a more uh, realistic uh, situation, like I would click on these links and say, yeah, I want to include all records from, uh, no nope, other way around, this way. I want to include all records from TBL order and only those records from fulfilled by employee where the values are equal. And in my sample data, it wouldn't really matter, but in a real production database, if an order is just entered, there is no reference to uh, someone who approved it and there's no reference to someone who have fulfilled it. So we need to change these to an outer join and you see there is a tiny error mark that hasn't been there before and that indicates the outer join between the two tables. Now also do that for this table um, just to, to make it uh, like you would to have to in a real application and now I run this query and you see this are our three uh, different columns with the different uh, employee names depending on their role in the context of each order record. And there's one final thing we could also do here in Design View to make this a little bit more understandable when looking at the the result window we can add an alias for the column here in theory at least i try to 
copy that. So what I do here now is I define an alias for a column and that is done by writing the alias name and then a colon and then the employee name. Here's the colon in the middle, the, the green part here is the alias name and the red part here is the actual database column that is referring to. I do the same for these other two columns. So and I call that employee name because that's what it actually is. So I run this again and now you see up here in the column headings here are now our more meaningful names really describing the columns in their actual context context so and yeah that is essentially it for today very simple but it's something that is simple if you see it and if you understand what's being done um, I had real trouble explaining this in writing in a forum post because it's quite it's going to be quite lengthy and it's hard to really understand if you don't see it so i hope you learned something new today and you enjoyed the video please leave a like below the video and if you want to see more videos about microsoft access vba sql and related topics please subscribe to the channel